Hey guys, it's Thomas John here. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing really well. And I hope you are having, oh, I'll show you my hair a little bit more. <laughs> um, and I hope you're doing uh, really well. I uh, hope you're enjoying the summer. And I wanted to do a video for you guys because a lot of people will ask me um, what it is like to be a psychic. Um, what is my daily life like when I am doing psychic readings? And I wanted to create a video for you guys and tell you a little bit about the ins and outs of what it, what it feels like in my daily life to be a psychic. Um, and um, thought that that would be fun to, um, uh, you know, talk to you about. And, um, um, and I wanted to kind of talk to you about that. So... Um, and some of the myths and misconceptions that kind of go along with being a psychic and a medium. So, um, first thing I wanted to say is there's a lot of myths about what a psychic is and what a medium is. Um, first off, a psychic and a medium. Um, so I'm going to cover actually some myths and misconceptions, and then I'll kind of tell you what it's like in my sort of daily life to be a psychic and how it affects me that I'm a psychic in my just regular life when I meet people and things like that. So um, there's some myths about being a psychic. One is that um, we know everything and that we have all the answers to all the questions in the world and that we know absolutely everything about everything. And um, I've even um, seen, um, <clears throat> you know, people post things like, well, you know, I guess psychics didn't know everything, you know, nobody predicted coronavirus, you know, I guess psychics, you know, don't know, it, you know, aren't real because, you know, there's missing children in the world. So why wouldn't they know where every missing child is and solve every murder? So I guess there's no psychics. And skeptics, particularly, you know, people who are uneducated, sort of belligerent type of people, skeptics, will use that as a way to discredit psychics. They'll say, you know, there, there can't be anything that says psychic. I mean, why, you know, every, you know, every, every cold case should be solved. You know, why aren't they giving of their gifts to every, every cold case and every missing child and every, um, and, um, and, and, and why would, why would a psychic ever get divorced? You know, why would a psychic ever make a mistake? Why would a psychic ever get a speeding ticket? And so what, so people, you have this misconception and stuff. So, um, that's totally not how psychic gifts work. Okay. Um, first off, um, many times when people are talking about that, they're talking about the psychic gift of prophecy. And the psychic gift of prophecy, which is predicting and knowing the future and knowingness about the future, um, that's only one psychic gift. So, for example, there's other psychic gifts. There's empathic. There is um, mediumistic. There are healing gifts. There are people that are empathic about certain situations. So prophecy is only one type of psychic gift, and not all psychics have prophecy. OK, um, that's only one form of psychicness. And, um, you know, I have done psychic readings for people a lot of times where, um, you know, a lot does not come through about the future. That's only one type of part of the reading. Um, the other thing is, is you have to understand that as psychics and stuff, of course, we do not know every single thing that's going to happen at every moment. We get feelings, we get senses, we get instincts about things. But if we were tuning into every single moment of every single time, um, we would not, um, I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be alive. I mean, we wouldn't be able to handle that, right? So we don't, no, we do not, you know, we don't know everything that's going to happen. We get senses, we get hunches, we get feelings. You also have to understand how psychic gifts work. We get impressions of things. We get feelings about things. We get insights or metaphorical things. But our gifts do not work where, you know, we, we start a reading and it says, okay, on January 2nd, you know, 2021, you're going to wake up, you're going to put on a red shirt, you're going to go into a blue car. You're going to have two eggs for breakfast. I mean, that's not how a psychic works. A psychic is feeling your energy, your vibration, and we have to interpret all that. And it's also coming through at a symbolic and energetic level. So we have to understand certain things. So for example, you know, I have certain symbols that I work with psychically, um, and they can mean different things in different contexts. So I have to be careful about interpreting those things. Um, as far as us as personal individuals, do I know everything about my life? Of course not. 
Because the, the truth of the matter is, is that a psychic reading and psychic and psychically, we only get what is supposed to help us. So there might be certain situations in life that are going to happen to me. Now, of course, I get instincts about people. I get senses about people. Um, and I do use my psychic abilities when I decide if I, you know, if I want to invest in something, if something's going to happen. Um, um, a business idea, if I want to tune into my health. Um, those are all things that I can get information. But if I was to know everything about my life, I, I, it would impact me from learning in this lifetime. So no, a psychic does not know every single thing that's going to happen to them at any time. In fact, most psychics will tell you that they are better at reading for other people than they are at reading for themselves. The reason is, is because we are energetically too close to the information. Oh, I just saw a little orb go by. <laughs> so we're a, little, we're a little too close to the information. So emotionally, it affects us. And we're not able to get sort of the same, we're not able to get that same clarity because we're emotionally involved. It's the same, reading, same reason why sometimes it's harder for me to read for friends or people, I, you know, people I'm close to or things like that because it's too effective, you know. So that's, that's part of things. So... The second thing is, is so that gives you a little bit about how, um, you know, and the other thing is, is you also have to remember too, is, you know, when people say things like, well, how come every murder is not solved, every cold case is solved? Remember, also that also at, at a certain spiritual level has to be allowed for, right? And, um, you know, we, we have to be, um, for example, you know, invited into a, a, a case. And again, if we, I have worked cold cases before, I have worked uh, murders before, I have worked, um, you know, missing persons before, I've actually worked several of those cases. And again, it, it doesn't work like, um, okay, well, this person is here, you know, they're at, um, this is the address that they're at. Um, again, we get feelings of things, we get senses of things. I might be told, I might get a description of the place, you know, I might get told, um, you know, um, I remember once I was working, actually, I, a family had hired me to work on um, an art situation. They had had missing art, and they could not find where it was. And so they invited me to, somebody had taken it. And so I described the uh, place that I saw it. And it turns out about six months later, they did find it. And it was in that place. Um, and that it was perfect description of what I said. I said, I saw red couches. There was a red couch there. I said, I saw it in somebody's basement. It was in somebody's basement. I said the city that I saw it in, it was in that city, but it, you know, it turns out they, you know, I mean, what, what are they going to do? Go into the city and go to everybody's house that has a red couch, you know? So there's only so much until that information can be utilized in the world um, you know, that there's only so much that can be done with that. And so, you know, what was great confirmation is I was able to kind of direct them at least, uh, for example, the city was very helpful, I remember to them, because there was a couple of cities that they had were considering that it could be it because they kind of had a sense of who had taken it or a couple people who have, could have taken it. And it was work, people who had worked with for them. And um, so they, you know, when I picked up the city, which was sort of an obscure city, it, it helped them to narrow their focus there and put more resources there. So, you know, it's interesting how people, you know, um, I mean, how many times do we have police officers? How many times do we have people that are in search and rescue that don't find a missing person, right? How many times do we have uh, detectives that don't find a missing person, you know? But we would never say, well, I mean, you know, if you're such a, if you're, if you're a real detective, you know, why, you know, why can't you solve every, you must not be a real detective then, you know? But for some reason, psychic, we, we take that of, of, of advice. So we take that opinion sometimes. So um, it's interesting, you know, it's interesting, but that's, that's kind of a little bit of how that works and stuff. Um, I always explain to people in terms of my daily life, this is how I'm wired. Um, I kind of use that terminology. This is, this is kind of how I'm programmed. So people talk about, you know, do you turn it off? Do you turn it on? Um, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but I don't really turn it off and on. It's not like a light switch for me. Um, what I find is that it's how I see the world. And it's probably similar to how a musician sees the world. 
an athlete sees the world, an artist sees the world. So an artist, you know, puts down their paintbrush. A, um, um, a, a, a musician puts down their piano, put down, puts down their trombone. That doesn't stop them from being a musician at that point. They still are experiencing the world as a musician. And that's how I look at that too. I'm doing readings. And when I'm doing readings, I'm in my psychic mode and I'm, I'm tuning in to them and I'm doing my work. But that doesn't mean the moment I put the phone down or my client leaves my office that I stop being a psychic. I'm still a psychic and I still experience the world psychically. Um, and I still, um, um, you know, uh, feel and sense and things. And I'm still, I'm still a psychic. And so I'm still how I'm wired. And uh, when I walk down the street or I walk down past people, I'm aware of things and I sense things and I see things similar to if somebody walked down the street and uh, they see, uh, you know, an art history, you know, person sees the Mona Lisa, right? And, and they say, oh, that's the Mona Lisa. They don't say, oh, wait, hold on. I'm not an art historian right now because I'm not at work. I don't know what that painting is, you know? Um, I see things and sense things all the time. We're going to talk a little bit about that, which is boundaries. So I, um, my boundaries are a big part of the work. So I never read anybody that unless I have their permission, okay? So I never enter somebody's vibration without their permission. I never psychically spy on anybody. I never say, oh, I wonder what that person's up to. I only, and even when I'm doing a reading, if you ask about somebody else, like somebody wants to know things about their husband or their children, I can only get stuff if it's for your highest good that I'm reading for you to know things. Um, <clears throat> so there's always boundaries, and I always ask permission first. I always say, may I give you a reading? May I, may? And even if I'm out and about and I sense something or feel something or I sense somebody's grandmother around them or somebody's mother or child, and I feel like I'm getting a message, I do not really go into that message unless I go up to the person and say, which I have done, and I do do, and I'll say, you know, I am a medium. I speak to people on the other side, and sometimes I become aware of things. I feel like I'm getting something for you. Would you be open to hearing it? And if the person is open to hearing it, then I will, you know, then that's something that I'll, you know, that I'll, that I'll, um, you know, that's something that I'll do. Okay. Now, um, next thing. Um, now that being said, if my team wants me to know something in team i mean my angels my guides my spirit guides if they want me to know something then they'll tell me and i'll become aware of that and stuff okay um so i'm aware of energy and stuff so that that so that being said like if i go to a party right and i feel people and i sense things if my team wants me to know stay away from that person don't trust that person they're gonna they will they will let me know that um um how does my gift work in terms of my day-to-day -day life? Am I always tuning in and feeling things and stuff? Again, I go back to this analogy of it's how I see the world. It's how I feel. It's, it's how I, so since I'm a natural medium and I was born with this ability, I would not know a different way. If I don't know another way of existing than to feel things psychically, you know? So it's hard to explain, but it would almost be like, you know, I have my vision, right? I can see my, both of my eyes work. I don't know what it would feel like to be blind. I, I could never know that unless I became blind because I've, I've never, I, I've always had eyesight. So it's the same with your, my psychic gifts. I've always had my psychic abilities. So I wouldn't know what it feels like to, to not be psychic. And so I do have knowingness. I do have information that comes into me. I'm always processing things. I'm always feeling things and sensing things. Sometimes I decide to tune into it a little bit more. Sometimes I don't. Um, for example, um, you know, yesterday um, I had this very strong feeling. I don't know. I'm not really sure why, but I have this very, I mean, well, I understand why now, but I have this really strong feeling um, I've been trying to go to the gym more and I had a strong feeling to go to a different gym. 
I normally have been going to the same gym in Las Vegas and I decided I don't know why I'm going to go to another branch of it. So I went to the gym and social distancing, right? Wearing my mask and I'm in the way back and I just go on the treadmill and lift some weights and spray everything down and stuff. Um, and, um, but I had a strong impulse. So for some reason I decided, you know what, I don't know, I'm just going to check, but I decided to call the other gym. And um, I called the other gym and they answered the phone, actually. They said, you know, blah, blah, Jim, you know, uh, how can I help you? And I thought, oh, that's weird. I thought maybe, you know, so, you know, so I, I, I thought maybe, you know, maybe I wasn't supposed to go there because they were closed. And I said, how long are you open till tonight? And he goes, actually, we just had a pipe burst. Um, and he goes, so we're going to actually be closing right now. So I, I felt that was why, you know, so sometimes I do listen to that. And then sometimes I'll choose not to, you know. That happens a lot, you know, when I was single, uh, I'm in a relationship now, but when I used to date, um, sometimes I'd feel like I'd start to get senses of things before things happened in a relationship. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to let this one run its course. And I'm just going to kind of be in the moment. I'm going to not go energetically and psychically into things and stuff. So it's interesting. And um, that's, you know, that's kind of the story with that. So anyways, I want to do this video for you guys. And I hope that gives you a little insight of kind of how some of this work and what it means to be a psychic and how this all works. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.